Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Vicki's Country Home. Today's just a short update. Um, I'm going to show you what's going on in the garden. But I also just went to a grand opening of a store that just opened here in the area for, well, as long as I've been here. We haven't had a whole lot of good options as far as organic foods. And in order to get them, you have to drive at least another 15, 20 miles to go get that. And I just don't have the time or the gas for my vehicle to do that all the time. So I really haven't taken advantage of it. But we have a new chain that has opened up and I'm really excited about it. So today was the first day they opened and that store was packed. It reminded me, seriously, of the grasshoppers in my garden. It was so many people. You couldn't walk. I just kind of looked around to see what was there, grabbed a few things, and hightailed it out as fast as I could because I don't... I live on 40 acres for a reason. I don't like being in huge crowds, and that was wall-to-wall -wall people. So. That being said, uh, they had some good prices and some of them may have just been because of the grand opening, but it looks like sometimes their sale prices are good anyway. So I spent $33.91 and I'm very happy with what I got. I bought these chicken breasts that we can grill or bake up. I'm not sure yet. They're large, um, but they're boneless, skinless, and they're farm fresh chicken with no growth hormones, minimally processed, no artificial ingredients, no added enhancements or solutions, hatched, raised, and harvested in the US. Now, I love to see that, so I'm very happy for that. And it was $1.99 a pound regular and I, yeah, it was a it was a dollar ninety nine a pound, and that was six dollars and thirty nine cents. And I paid more than that for some that was not quite this wholesome at the normal grocery store last week. Five dollars for two this size. So I'm very happy with that price. And I bought a bag of onions, yellow onions. Um, this is brown. I'm not sure. I've never heard of brown onions. That was $2.99. These Roma tomatoes that looked really nice. And they were a dollar, or they were 88 cents a pound for Roma tomatoes. The least I've seen them around here lately is, I think, $1.29 a pound. So that was a good price. And I bought two bags. They call these yellow, oops, falling apart. Yellow creamer tomatoes. Now, I've never heard them called creamer tomatoes for the yellow ones before. Usually I hear baby gold. Excuse my dogs barking in the background. And these were $1.99 a pound. I've been paying $4 a pound for these baby gold potatoes. And they're larger than these. And I use these for a lot of recipes. I like the size. Leaving them skin on. I love them. So I was really happy about that for $1.99 a pound. That's $2 off a pound just on each of these. And each of these is about 3 pounds. So that was a really good deal. And I bought some large Yukon Golds for other recipes. And most of this stuff was organic. 
those Yukon Golds were two forty-seven. dollars uh, I'm sorry, $1.29 a pound, and I got about two and a half pounds. And then I got some pepperoni because I'm going to my sister's and we're going to make some pepperoni pizza at her house. So, really good deal. They even put it in a shopping bag, probably a grand opening thing. So, I, I'm just really thrilled about that. So, now let's go on to the garden. If you watched my video from the other day, we have had a plague of grasshoppers. I haven't seen anything like that since we have been here. Every step you take, and last week was really bad, the baby nymph grasshoppers, a swarm would come up with every footstep. They're slightly better now, but they've also grown up. And this little tree right here had leaves on it. And I don't know if you can see, but it has almost completely defoliated this tree, so I hope it makes it. I'm not sure it will. And I don't know if you could see, but every step, there's a lot of little grasshoppers just hopping ahead of me, but for the most part, they're larger ones, and that's even harder to control. This is, this was my squash garden. And last, oh, at last weekend, this garden had good-sized yellow squash, zucchini squash, butternut squash, cantaloupe, watermelon, and tomatillo plants. Well, as of right now, That was where all of the watermelon was. Well, I think I see one little seed coming up right there. All of the plants are gone. They have been totally eaten. This was my yellow squash. That was a marigold. That's just a little stick left. This was zucchini. That was all butternut. And down on the end was cantaloupe. Well, they really, there's nothing left. They totally took them all to the ground. This here, and I've got a grasshopper on my camera. This here was tomatillos that had receded from last year and they were beautiful. They're entirely gone. They haven't done too much to Brian's hops. I don't know why, but I'm thankful at least that's left. It's the only green thing around. Except for what's left of that tomatillo. That one hopefully is going to make it if they leave it alone. I have been spraying, I have been dusting, I've, I will go into all of that, but this is just heartbreaking because this garden was absolutely beautiful. But yeah, they're, the grasshoppers are still here. And partly it's because as you look around, all it is is grassland, weeds, and because we're going, we're in the summer now, and this is high desert, we have a short period of green, and then everything dies back, and the only green things, pretty much, that's left is your garden. Now, I was, have gotten so many good suggestions on things I could do to help with these grasshoppers and I've tried some and one of them and it's probably the best is to let my chickens out and free range and let them go at the grasshoppers and I would love nothing more but if you look at my chicken coop 
the yard is totally enclosed with chicken wire. And that's not to keep my chickens in. That's because of all the predators that we have. And because we don't have trees or anything that they can shelter under, we also don't have a fence that's close by. Our, our property is 40 acres and it's fenced, but it's barbed wire. That doesn't slow the chickens down. So we have them in this enclosure for a reason. We have huge hawks and eagles, golden eagles, bald eagles. We've got giant owls. We've got coyotes that even though there isn't a lot of cover, you'd be surprised how close they can get before you discover them. So as much as I would love to let these chickens get out in my garden and eat those things because it's good for them, it's good for the eggs, and it would help us, it's just not a good option. Hi Kong! This is my giant Jersey giant rooster that comes out every time I'm outside in the garden because he, he knows I usually will bring him something. But anyway, that is the reason that I can't let my chickens free range. And this is my main garden and it's actually fared fairly well considering the number of grasshoppers that we're dealing with. And I think primarily I think a lot of it has to do with the tomatoes and peppers. And I will show you that as we go through. This is my greens area. And as you can see, they have done a number so far. There's still greens left. But I don't know if you can see. There's just tons of them hopping and crawling around. And they're eating. This is one of the ideas I got, there's so many, that I found online and it was to put vinegar and soap in a zip top bag. You know, it's caught some, but honestly, I think it was more by accident with sheer numbers of these things. I don't, and the bag really, I don't think that helped. But you can see they've, eaten quite a bit of that kale. Not too much of the spinach, a little bit back in the back. Most of the baby Swiss chard. There's some left. They're working on the bigger Swiss chard. And they haven't really done anything to the asparagus, which basically it stopped producing for the year. These are just to let it build energy. Down there's some broccoli and the stuff in the front's doing okay. But all that was back there is basically gone. They haven't done too much to the potatoes, although they're starting to work on it. But down here at the end, you can see that they've eaten quite a bit here on the end. And green beans, they've done a ton of damage. Now these peppers and the tomatoes, they, there's been some eaten off of them, but not too bad. And my oregano, nothing, <laughs> nothing bothers that. So the tomatoes seem to be holding their own. Another marigold that's just stripped bare. The peppers, so far, so good. Um, I think they're starting to eat on them a little. So I'll get into what I've been doing to try and limit this. But I'm just thankful that so far it's not too bad. And I actually have quite a few peppers. I've already picked some and there's several that are pretty much ripe that I can pick. Some are turning red, so 
this basil. <laughs> this one's not too bad. My other basil in a pot is almost gone. And they did hit this to this pepper plant pretty well. It's still hanging on. And these San Marzano, I've actually picked two of those already, so that's that's a, an exciting thing. And these tomatoes and these tomatillos are all holding on okay. Although again, these things are everywhere and they're still eating. And more green beans. And some are going to make it, I hope, but there's still quite a bit gone. Almost all those green beans, that they're probably done. Most of the green onions tops have been eaten off. They're not really doing anything to my sugar snap peas, and I'm thankful. It's weird the things that they're getting and the things that they aren't. They are just feasting on my raspberry, mostly the raspberries, even the blackberries also. They're just stripping the leaves. I don't know if you can see those. They're just like lace is all that's left. And, and you can see as I walk how many are still here. This is a fraction of what I have been seeing. And my strawberries are okay. They are coming in and, and eating on them, but it's, they haven't totally taken the plants out. Now I'll tell you what I've been doing to try and stem this plague of grasshoppers. I started with insecticidal soap at the advice from my local nursery came home, did it, it didn't seem to do anything. Now this could be sh the sheer numbers because again these grasshoppers are covering this entire area. I'm, if you walk out there, the grasshoppers are everywhere. Although right now they're mostly coming to my garden because it's still green. But there's just thousands and thousands. So the insecticidal soap didn't help much. Then I put diatomaceous earth on it. That didn't help. Then I got something called Captain Jack's Dirty Bug Juice. And it's natural and organic. Sprayed that and it's only effective against the nymphs, the babies. And you know, I think it reduced the number a little bit because I didn't just spray the garden. I actually sprayed most of the area that's around us. Probably half acre or more that I just walked around sprayed. And I think that helped, but it, as you can see, there's just still so many. The blackberry's not doing bad. So, so that's what I've done so far. And then yesterday I came out, and this was a suggestion that several people made. And I, this white stuff you're seeing now is all-purpose flour. So, if it's working, I'm not sure. Because, again, there's just so many of these things out here. Um... I'm willing to give it a shot, <laughs> but honestly, hopefully it's going to hold them back from what I have left. I, I really don't have time to replant any of the squash or melons. It's too late in our season. So I'd like to keep what I have left. And if the flower helps, that's great. I'm probably going to go buy some kind of more toxic pesticide to use outside of the garden um, because if I don't everything I've read says that 
if they're here this year, they will be as bad or worse next year. And I, I don't want to go through this again. So I will probably be getting some kind of more toxic solution and spraying parts of the property that hopefully we can keep this down for next, next year. And in the meantime, I will continue to do everything as non-toxic as I can inside the garden. So, there you go. And these pictures show you the grasshoppers. That is my basil. That's thyme. They're just stripping the herbs. This was a rose bush that was full of roses and leaves a few days ago. Another rose bush, the brown was a rhubarb. Those were irises that they have mowed down. I've never seen anything like it. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk again soon.